Hello and welcome. Let's take a look at our top story this hour. In a long-awaited response to a Western price cap, Russian President has signed a decree that bans the supply of crude oil and oil products to nations that impose the cap. According to the decree, the ban will come into effect from the 1st of February and will last for five months. The decree said the ban may be lifted in individual cases on the basis of a special decision from Putin. Если ограничить цену нефти из России или других стран, установить какие-то искусственные ценовые потолки, то это неизбежно ухудшит инвестиционный климат во всей мировой энергетике. Затем спровоцирует усиление глобального дефицита энергоресурсов и дальнейший рост их стоимости. А это, повторяю, повторяю ударит в первую очередь по беднейшим государствам. In early December, the G7, the European Union and Australia agreed to a 60 US dollar per barrel price cap on Russian seaborne crude oil because of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Under the cap, oil traders who want to retain access to Western financing must promise not to pay above 60 US dollars per barrel for Russian seaborne oil. Moscow's move is not expected to impede deliveries to India, China and other importers that did not join the price cap. The price cap that was introduced alongside the European Union embargo on seaborne deliveries of Russian crude oil is aimed to ensure Russia cannot bypass the embargo by selling its oil to third countries at high prices. However, Russia has said the cap will not affect its military campaign in Ukraine and has expressed confidence that it would find new buyers. Russia is the world's second largest oil exporter after Saudi Arabia, and any actual dis disruption to its sales would have far-reaching consequences for global energy supplies. Now for more on this, James Jackson, a journalist, political analyst and energy expert, joins us live from Berlin. Thanks for being with us, James. Now, what are the bigger implications of Russia deciding to stop export to countries that have imposed this price cap? I don't think there are actually any big implications on this because Russia was always going to want to diplomatically strike back, so to speak. So actually this, this price cap is about $20 per barrel lower than the market price rate. So it, accepting it for Russia would be an admission of defeat. And I think Putin's whole history as a KGB spy, as a hard man president, and now invading Ukraine has shown that he will do anything to save face. So at really this statement from Putin shouldn't be taken too seriously. It's more about him saving face. Now, some interestingly, some experts have been saying that he has already been selling barrels at $60 a price to China, to India, to Turkey. So this was more about a compromise between different EU states, uh, including also, of course, Ukraine and Australia, uh, about where can they draw the line where everyone's happy and at the same time nobody's happy about how much they, they're agreeing to pay. So this could be ch this could change. Some people might be able to buy or Putin might go through back channels and might sell the oil through third parties. We've seen investigations in this past year that Putin was quite willing to let sell his oil on to Turkey and then Turkey could send it on at a marked up price. So uh, on to Europe. So I don't think there's very much to Putin's statement. I think this is more a story of um, Russia being maligned internationally, Russia being unable to um, strike agreements and trying to save face against international uh, alliance against them. All right, and James, beyond the oil supplies, the real issue is possible gas supply to EU nations from Russia. Can EU nations afford cuts on this? Well, exactly. You've got to remember that for all of the oil that Russia does export, number one in Europe, they are known as a gas power. So can Russia afford to, and of course, this price cap doesn't affect gas. It also doesn't affect liquid um, pipelines of oil. So again, I think it's, it's kind of a bit more bark than bite from Putin. Can Europe afford to not receive Russian gas? I think actually the gas saving um, the gas 
silos in Europe are pretty full. They're more full than they were this time last year, let's remember. We've had, until a few weeks ago, a relatively mild winter. So I think Europe is pulling out of this quite well. Um, Europe has insanely quickly found replacement for Russian gas, which it was so dependent on for so long, through Qatar, through American liquid natural gas. So I would say the prospects for Europe look pretty good this year. Of course, things could last a while. We don't know what's going to happen in 2023, uh, but this price cap, as well as Putin's ban, are going to be looked at over and over again every five months, in some cases every two months for review. Right, James, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us with your analysis. Thank you. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.